It's a new dawn, a new day, and a new life for Europe's premier basketball competition. Coming up in this week's show. Bringing it to Berlin. We relive last season's final four and speak to a coach determined to take his team there this time round. Gistopoulos. We'll hear from the man who's adopted a Greek name and taken Athens to his heart. Fantastic. When it comes to supporters, few can match the passion of Euroleague. We fly to Freak City to test out the noise levels. And we'll have a full season preview. This is Euroleague Weekly. The 2015-2016 Euroleague season provided plenty of twists, turns, high drama and excitement. By May, there were only four teams left standing. They gathered for a stunning shootout over four games in the German capital, Berlin. The opening semi-final was an all-Russian encounter. Euroleague powerhouse Seska Moscow went up against rivals Lokomotiv Kuban. The game was tight. Nando De Colo's record 30-point haul proved key. The second semi-final was even tighter and saw Turkish giants and Pache Istanbul steal an overtime win against the surprise package from last season, Laboral Kucha from Spain. Mark and Delaney and Ryan Brokoff both scored 21 points as Lokomotiv edged the third-place player. 2016 Euroleague Championship game was a contest that more than lived up to the pre-game hype. Victor Kriapa's late tipping with under two seconds left on the clock sent the game into overtime. This after a Bobby Dixon-inspired second-half comeback. Nando De Colo and Milos Teodosic shone brightest as the Russians claimed a seventh Euroleague title. This season, the competition will be fierce. Just 16 teams will do battle for a spot in the final four, which this year is being staged in Istanbul. So who will be involved in the season finale? We put two EuroLeague experts on the spot for their predictions. I have to pick out Jessica. I think they passed the only buyer that helped them back, you know, the fear of losing the Final Four. Uh, they have uh, kept all the players, they added uh, Augustine, so I think their favourite team, Fenerbahce, is the second league. The team I have to pick, they have the best coach in the Euroleague. They kept all the pieces of the puzzle, but last year they showed how good they really are. Another team I have to pick is Barcelona, I really believe in the, the team. For the fourth position, I have to pick Panathinaikos or Olympiakos. For sure, I hope that both teams can advance to the Final Four. Champion will be there. Seska Mosca, Real Madrid, and FC Barcelona will be there. And without thinking much, I have to place the Fenerbahce, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Seska Mosca, Fenerbahce, the final four. One man who's desperate to be involved in the final four is James Gist. After five years in the EuroLeague, the big American import feels the time is right for Panathinaikos Superfoods Athens to end its six-year hiatus. He really likes his time here. Uh, he's one of the crowd's uh, favorite, and uh, uh, you know, he's, uh, when he's out, he's really uh, vocal. You know, uh, you, you can feel his presence. Definitely a, goof, a goofy person. He's like a clown and he's a jokester. People are like, I, I can't believe he's not this like, you know, person that's yelling and screaming, but he's just like the, the goofball, I think, out of the group and normally the glue. He normally holds the team and whoever is around him, his friends, family, together. There are two sides to Panthenaikos Superfoods' James Giss. Whether it is his hard-working, inspirational play on the court or his quiet, humorous personality off it, Gist has cemented himself as a fan favorite in Athens. I'm the energy of the team, you know. I'm that motor, you know, that my desire to win, you know, I, I, I put it all out there on the court and I think people can see that. Doing it 
for a team like Panther Nico Superfoods, you know, their fans are so passionate. And so when they see that we have the same passion, the same level of intensity for every game, you know, they feel that every game I play, it's like my last, you know. Uh, every loose ball, every opportunity I can to go out there and fight, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, you know, that's what, I, that's what I'm giving. That's what I'm putting out there. I'm putting my everything out there. And people always come up, you know, they, they shake my hand. They always say I'm their favorite player. It makes you feel good, you know, knowing that you're recognized, you know, for something that you love to do. But we have one of the greatest fan bases in Europe, if not the best. And having them at every single game, you know, cheering for you, screaming for you, it gives you, it gives you that extra boost you need, you know. You can play in some gyms and maybe you jump this high. You play in a walker, you're going to jump this high just because of just the feeling that they give you, you know, the cheering. The free scoring power forward has built a reputation for himself as one of the most influential players in the Turkish Airlines Euroleague, known for his exciting style of play. A lot of people like me because of my dunks and, you know, the block shots that I have, you know. Um, and it's just, it's for that, I think I do more so for the fans. You know, the more spe spectacular high flying acrobatics, I guess you would say. I do that to, to get the fans involved, to get the team involved. Sometimes we might need a spurt in the game where the energy is just real low. And going for a crazy block shot or going for a crazy dunk gets everybody going. It, gets, it wakes everybody up, you know, things like that. And, and those are things that I try to do throughout the game if I see an opportunity, you know. And at the same time, it's fun. It's fun. You got to have fun, you know. Basketball for me is not just a job, you know. It's, it's my life and I enjoy doing it, you know. Now coming into his fourth season in the Greek capital, Gist is considered one of the team's leaders, a role which he has grown into. Last year, um, we had practice and I think Dematidis had, he, he was injured or, you know, he coaches let him rest. So he was in the training room and at the end of practice, uh, coach brought it in. You know, he was like, you know, we say one, two, three, pow. We were going to do that and Dematidis wasn't there. And so everybody was like looking around, waiting for somebody to say it. And they were like, James? And I'm like, what? They were like, you're the oldest guy here. Like, you got to say it. I'm just like, no. Nah. You know, it chipped me out. So being considered, you know, one of the elders on the team and one of the veteran players on the team, you know, it's crazy now. But, you know, stepping into that role, I feel like I'm ready for it. Things haven't always been easy for Gist. And if it wasn't for Argeris Pedulakis, who returns to the Greens as head coach this year, things could have been very different. But the move to Athens gave him a new lease of life. He believed in me, you know, he believed in me, he believed in my ability. Being traded, you know, to Panathinaikos in that moment, that was probably one of the more down parts of my year, uh, or my career, because I had never felt like I was a player that couldn't help a team win. And coming here, Pedralakis realized and knew what my capabilities were, and him giving me that role, him giving me that confidence, and him believing in me, you know, it, it, it kind of made a new James Gist. Those low points are distant memories for many, but for Gist, there is one thing left for him to conquer before he can move on. The one thing I need to be able to do that is a championship, you know, a European title. I think doing that, I will feel reinvented. You know, right now I'm still working hard, still grinding, still trying to bounce back from the things that have, you know, kind of kept me back from reaching that top level. It's been all change for the Greens in the off-season. Ioannis Borussis and Mike James head up an arrivals list that also includes Casey Rivers and Chris Singleton. Agis Perolaikis returns as head coach. All eyes will be on Seska Moscow and their quest to seal back-to-back -back EuroLeague Turkish Airlines titles. The Russian powerhouse will again rely on the incredible talents of Nando Nicolo and Milos Teodosic, while the roster has been bolstered by three big arrivals including James Augustine at centre, along with Semen Antonov. Demetrius Nichols is the biggest departure. Last season, Fenerbahce Istanbul went within two seconds of a first EuroLeague crown. The Turkish outfit has retained a strong core of players and added two valuable additions in small forward James Nanali and centre Ahmet Duverioglu. Ricky Hickman is the biggest departure. Gonia Vittoria Gasteiz were one of the surprise packages of last season after reaching a final four for the first time in 10 years. The club welcomes five new faces to the Basque country, including guard Shane Larkin, Andrea Barniani, and Johannes Vukman. Ioannis Borussis and Davis Bertans head out the exit door. There's a new coach at the helm too. Sito Alonso takes over from Velimir Perasevic. 
The sole German representatives in EuroLeague are Broza Bamberg. Despite losing Bradley Wanamaker, they've strengthened with the arrival of French shooting guard Fabian Cozier, as well as Maudo Lowe and Vladimir Veremienko. In the small German town of Bamberg, basketball is more than just a sport. Every week, 10% of the population cram into Broza Arena to support their beloved Broza Bambo. Welcome to Freak City. I'm Italian, so the word passion is together with pasta, the thing that I have every day, right? But here I experience a balanced passion. They really support you no matter what you do, every game. And they come for the show. They come for the event. They push you over your limit without the, let's say, the, the dark side of the passion. All the fans are crazy. Every fan of Bamberg is crazy and they live basketball during the season. But not only the fans, also the city of Bamberg contributes a lot. During playoffs, some of the buildings downtown are illuminated red. There are flags, the cars have flags on them. People have their hair dyed red. The men grow their beards until the last game of the season is over. They have tattoos, they just live basketball. Lots of them drive several kilometers on the bus to see all the games. They fly through Europe and schedule their private meetings into the off season. Auf die off season gelegt, damit sie also viel, viel Zeit beim Basketball verbringen können. And the importance of their loyal home support is not lost on the team, especially after suffering just two defeats at home last season. Our arena, let's say, our fans is a, is a big key for us. We don't take it for granted the support we have by them because they, they are really, they are loud, uh, but the atmosphere is great. It's not like in some gyms in Europe. They are passionate with our team. They support us until the very end. I think uh, Bamberg is uh, really unique because the passion they show, uh, the people from Bamberg show is is special, you know, it's something that you don't see around. They are loud, they cheer for you, even maybe in some loss, they never say nothing to you, you know, they just try to help you to do your best and they know that you are trying your best, you know, even if sometimes you cannot, you know, show it. Last season, with the help of their supporters, Bamberg reached the top 16 for just the third time in their history. It would end in disappointment for the German side but their supporters were there to pick them up when they were at their lowest. We didn't go through the playoffs in the toughest group ever in the history of EuroLeague. We didn't go through for one game. So we were short of one game, or maybe three points to win a game. A very small thing. And when you are eliminated, you can have bitter feelings. You can be sad, you can be frustrated, but we had 10 minutes of standing ovation. I could never experience something better. So that was the picture of our unbelievable season. Supporters could also prove key to Zvena Zvedza MTS Belgrade. The Serbian-based powerhouse have brought back hometown boy Milko Bialica and Charles Jenkins, who should provide plenty of points. Borisa Simonic and Ogni and Kuzmic add further strength. Quincy Miller, Mike Zerbez and Vladimir Stimac have all departed. Few countries can rival Lithuania for basketball obsession. Dalgiris Kaunas will once again rely on a hotbed of local talent sprinkled with experience. The backcourt has been boosted by veteran duo Kevin Pangos and Leo Westerman. While inside, the Lithuanian champions also welcome Antanas Kavaliauskas and Augusto Cesar Lima. Going in the opposite direction are Olivier Hanlan, Ian Bajukas, and Martinas Pochias. By their own high standard, the last campaign was one to forget for Maccabi Fox Tel Aviv. No surprise then that the Israeli club decided to overhaul its roster in the offseason. The changes started at the top with the appointment of Erez Edelstein as the new head coach. Mike Zerbes, Sonny Reeves, Andrew Goodlock, and Quincy Miller had the big name signings. 
but the latter three have suffered pre-season injuries and American Miller has been ruled out for six months. Trevor Mbakwe and Dragan Bender are two from a host of players to depart the club. With a rich history in European basketball, Galatasaray, Odea Bank, Istanbul are one of two new teams entering the revamped 2016 competition. The Turkish club sealed their spot after winning the Euro Cup and they've been busy in the off-season. Austin Day, John Diebler, Alex Tyus and Russ Smith are among several new faces in Istanbul. Among those heading in the opposite direction are Eric McCollum, Stefan Lasme and Curtis Jarrell. Russia provides the second new addition to the competition as Unix Kazan will represent the Republic of Tatarstan, some 800 kilometers east of Moscow. And Unix certainly aren't there just to make up the numbers. Small forward Cody Clark leads the list of impressive new arrivals while guard Evgeny Voronov and forward Pavel Antipov return for a second stint with the club. Valery Likodi is the biggest departure. Center Alan Omic and versatile forwards Deshaun Thomas and Tyler Honeycutt will ensure Anadolu FS Istanbul are competitive this campaign. Alex Tyus and John Diebler will be missed, while the club will be hoping their new head coach Velimir Parasevich can replicate his final four accomplishments at Vitoria. Turkey has undoubtedly grabbed the headlines when it comes to coaching appointments. NBA and EuroLeague master tactician David Blatt takes over the reins at Daris Vakadosh, Istanbul. Joining the 57-year-old in Turkey are playmaker Bradley Wanamaker, rebounder Adrian Moyomon, and swingman James Anderson to help fill out an impressive roster. Milko Bialica and Emir Prozic lead the list of departures. There have been big changes too at EA7 and Bordio Armani Milan. Former EuroLeague champion Ricky Hickman arrives alongside swingman Zoran Dragic, while close to the hoop, Miroslav Radulica will add plenty of height. Three notables go in the opposite direction, including Charles Jenkins and Robbie Hummel. FC Barcelona Lassa have also undergone major changes in the offseason, as Xavi Pascual ended his 12-year association with the Catalan Giants. His replacement on the sidelines on a three-year deal is the experienced Giorgio Barzocas. On the court, big things will be expected of Tyrese Rice and Victor Claver. They'll need to fill the void created by the departures of Thomas Satoransky and Alex Abrines. Olympiacos Pereos have three new faces, including Eric Green, who brings some experience at point guard, while Kiprianos Maragos is tipped for a bright future. DJ Strawberry and Othello Hunter have both departed. The Greek club will tip off the league when they face Real Madrid in what will be a repeat of the first ever EuroLeague game played 16 years ago. The Spanish Giants are without superstar Sergio Rodriguez, but that loss will be softened somewhat by the rivals of Dante Draper and big man Anthony Randolph and Othello Hunter. Pablo Lasso is at the helm for another season in the Spanish capital, and the experienced head coach promises his team will continue to entertain. In the heart of Spain lies the capital of Madrid, home to the most crowned club in European basketball history, Real Madrid. The driving force behind the nine-time EuroLeague champions, coach Pablo Lasso. First thing, I think I'm a pretty normal person. Um, nothing special in my life. Uh, I love basketball from very young. He's a great coach, everybody, all his players uh, praise him. It's really important. I think he's a player's coach, you know, the one that uh, uh, really likes to make them feel comfortable. To have Lasso at the helm of such a club was only natural. My father being a coach, I always uh, been on that kind of environment. Then I played on, on a lot of teams. I played on the national team. I played in Real Madrid in my hometown. Lasso is about to enter his sixth season in charge of the Spanish powerhouse club boasting 33 domestic league and 26 cup trophies. But the 48-year-old led his men to arguably their greatest triumph yet in 2015. Madrid's first EuroLeague title in two decades. But it's more the journey there that makes Pablo most proud. Even when you lose a game and you see the reaction of the team, sometimes inside of you, those moments are as big as a championship. And I'm that kind of person. With those bad moments, they're going to grow you up as a team. Also growing is the popularity in Lasso's style of play. I remember one day 
coming out, I think it was Cheska or in Russia, it was far away from Spain. A guy came up to me and said, hello, Pablo Lanzo, yes, yes, I just want to tell you that uh, I like basketball, but I don't go to every game, but, uh, but I love to watch Real Madrid. He allows the players to run, prioritizes the fast game, the exterior shots, the counter-attacks that finish with an alley -oop or a triple. He likes the fun game, to play fast and he likes to assist players below the ring. And how does the 2015 Coach of the Year deal with the pressures of leading one of the world's most famous sporting brands in the world? When I first came, I knew it was, it was going to be a difficult job because Somehow, it looks like Real Madrid has to win everything. But I always say that the only way to win it is find the way. If you don't know the way, you're not going to win. That mantra will be tested this season with the loss of their star playmaker. Sergio Rodriguez, he's a, being an MVP of the EuroLeague. He's a player with a lot of impact. Um, somebody that probably you cannot just bring somebody to replace. But with a talent-laden team, that Felipe Reyes, Sergi Yul, JC Carroll, Rudy Fernandez, Gustavo Ayon. As well as loyal fans. They won with us, they lose with us, and they stay together with us. This is something that you don't create in one day. Anything is possible in Pablo's eyes as he aims for the unprecedented 10th EuroLeague title. Real Madrid's preseason reached an exciting climax as they opened their annual NBA Global Games. Basketball fans in the Spanish capital welcomed a strong Oklahoma City Thunder squad minus big name departure Kevin Durant. A sellout crowd packed out Barclay Card Center. Yet despite raucous home support, the Spanish Giants found themselves trailing in the opening two quarters. And there's a three that goes down. Sabonis. All the way to the rim. The nine-time EuroLeague winners rallied late on. Real Madrid with it. Down to three. Here's a three. And it's gone! And the comeback was complete through a stunning three-pointer right on the full-time buzzer. Loose, save, three, Yule, goal! Oh! Yui had five of the 23 pointers scored by the hosts. The Spanish side pulling away in the final minute of overtime to seal an historic five-point win. Well, J.C. Carroll led Madrid with 24 points on a night that will live long in the memory of Real supporters. The Thunder barely had time to lick their wounds before travelling on to face FC Barcelona in Game 2. Unfortunately, the two-time EuroLeague champions were missing several key players through injury, including Tyrese Rice and Petteri Kopanen, yet they made a strong start. The Thunder looked a different proposition after the half-time interval, Back-to-back -back three pointers by Victor Claver and Juan Carlos Navarro helped Barcelona regain the lead at the end of the third quarter. Inside the final minute, Enes Kanter put Oklahoma back in front. Sasha Vezenkov's misses downtown proved costly as the NBA squad held on to seal a narrow win. Barcelona falling agonizingly short. So the 2016-2017 season will tip off in the Spanish capital with a clash between Real Madrid and Olympiacos. Elsewhere, two European champions square off as Euro Cup winners Galatasaray welcome Euro League defending champions Seska Moscow. Milan and Savena Zvedza are both at home on the same evening. There are four games the following night. Unix make their EuroLeague return against Barcelona, while Bamberg face a tough opener. Panathinaikos will be looking to make home support count, while the round draws to a close in Spain when Basconia host Efes and former coach Velimir Parasovic. Well, that's
that's just about it for this week's show. We'll be back next week with the curtain raiser from Spain as Euroleague 2016 tips off. Till then, I'm Ronald McIntosh. Bye for now. <laughs>